everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video is another, um, I guess, cooking, homesteading um, type of video, but it's something I strongly believe in incorporating in your lifestyle and in your um, eating habits is fermented food. I think, and I know for a fact, fermented foods are delicious and nutritious and really great for you. They provide so much health benefits for your gut. If you have a healthy gut, um, you pretty much have a healthy body. And we all know that our gut is our second brain and we need to keep it functioning properly. We need to make sure it's flowing properly. There's no backups or anything like that. So incorporating good fermented foods, which is a probiotic that supports your overall gut health is essential. So there's so many ways that you can incorporate a probiotic in your diet naturally, and that is through fermented foods. That can be through sourdough, that can be through my fermented pickles or the fermented cabbage we are going to make today, um, which is AKA sauerkraut. Kabucha is another way. Also, there are um, um, types of vitamins on the market that you can um, ingest and take to help with that. But this is just another way. Um, if you're not a big sauerkraut fan, my pickles are extremely... Um, delicious um, and I think they're more crispier than canning um, pickles. Um, I like to ferment them. My family likes them so I keep making them and whatnot. So we're gonna make, um, I have tested this numerous times um, with just a simple head of cabbage. So this is great to make in abundance when you are growing a lot of cabbage um, in your garden. If it's in the middle of winter or late fall like it is right now here um then you can pick up cabbage fairly reasonably in the supermarket because this is the season that everybody's cooking with it so i like to have a good jar of fermented sauerkraut in the fridge to use as a side dish to use as salads to as uh to put on burgers and hot dogs and sausage you name it, and sandwiches. Um, and it's just a great way to give you that serving of um, fermented foods a day. Now, I do have to say, if you are into fermented foods or even if you are taking a supplement, you do need to have enough prebiotics in your body to let the probiotics work. So what that means is you need to have a diet rich in a lot of fruit and a lot of vegetables and a lot of fiber because there's no way for those probiotics to work if your body is not filled with prebiotics. So make sure you um, have a good, well-rounded diet with fruits and vegetables and grains and things like that, whatever your diet allows you. And if you're not sure, you might wanna talk with your physician or talk with your um, um, nurse or dietitian or nutritionist about this a little bit more in depth. But yes, you do need those good prebiotics. And I have tons of recipes that incorporate fruits and vegetables from savory to sweet. So make sure you check out all those videos on my channel. I have them also over on the blog if you want to print them out and save for later and make them for later. And if you do make any of those recipes, let me know because um, A, I, wanted, I want feedback like, did you make it? Did you have success? Did you have failures? Um, because I'm always looking for foolproof, easy, affordable, delicious meals that you can put on the table that is on a budget. So let me know. Your feedback is very, very important to me. Okay, so we are in, well, we're in, we're in the middle of winter. Well, no, we're not even in winter yet. We're still very, very late fall um, entering into winter. So one of the things that I need for my fermented sauerkraut is obviously a head of cabbage and you can do this green or purple. You're going to need a good salt. So this is not like a table salt. This is like a good sea salt, like a Himalayan sea salt. Um, you need that. And then you also need um, a glass bowl. Make sure you have a glass bowl. Don't use metal. Metal messes with the fermentation. It, it messes with um, um, the 
all the nutrients you need, the probiotics that you need, the fermentation that's happening. Also too, you're going to need some mason jars to store your sauerkraut while it's fermenting. You can use your standard weights, your fermenting weights and covers, or you can simply use a tea towel, rubber band, and a, a rack that will fit inside your mason jar or jar that you're using. This could be an old pasta jar. Just make sure you wash the rack. And then I like to, when I first started out, I put it in a, a Ziploc bag after I cleaned it. And that's what I used as my weight. So you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money, but I will link in the blog post some of the tools that I like to use when I'm fermenting and whatnot. Another thing is you are going to need, I like to put something on top of um, my cabbage or pickles or things that I make, such as a grape leaf, because it makes gives it that little bit of crunch that I love. If you don't like crunch, you can omit this. But since, like I said, we're in late fall and we're entering into winter, my leaves have all fell, they have changed and all that jazz. So I am simply going to take the outer layer of my cabbage. It's the part that a lot of people take off anyway of their cabbage and throw out. And I'm gonna set them to the side because these are the things that I'm going to put in top versus um, the grape leaf. And then everything inside the cabbage is what we're going to use except for the core obviously for the sour. Okay we're going to go ahead and remove this core before we start shredding our cabbage. So I'm simply going to cut around and just like twist it out of the actual cabbage because I don't want this inside my sauerkraut because it'll make it a little tougher. I mean, you can put that in there. Obviously don't do the whole core, but you can put that in there. It's just, it's just a taste thing. And I highly recommend doing it this way first and then um, trying it again with the inside of the core. That means everything from like about here down. So I'm just taking a little paring knife and ooh, drawing a little circle around it to make my life easier. If, well, I don't know, this carrying knife is not working very good. So we'll just use this knife. And, whoops. And then you also want to make sure you clean your sauerkraut too. So make sure you clean this in a vinegar solution, which I'm noticing I don't think I cleaned it. So I think I'm just gonna core it and then go to cleaning next, then shredding. So. And let's see if we can get this little guy out. Nope, that was an epic fail. So we're just going to cut it in half and get the core out. And then I'm going to clean it. The struggles of cooking. It's trial and error, right? So there we go. Make a little V shape. There we go. And another little V shape. All right, I'm going to clean this and dry this and bring this back, and then we're going to start shredding now that we got this puppy out. A little bit of a struggle. Okay, now that we have cored this and washed this, we're going to shred this. Now, you can thinly slice this. That's completely up to you, depending on what tools and resources you have. I'm actually going to stick this in my food processor. This is, um, if you have a little extra money, I would highly, highly recommend um, purchasing a food processor because that's how I shred all my cheese. That is how I shred my cabbage, um, <clears throat> anything like that. It's just a tool. I know it's big and bulky, but it's a tool that I do use a lot. <clears throat> so I find that it's great good. But if not, you're just going to take it and just thinly slice it. And I can kind of give you a demonstration to the best of your ability and depending on like, see how this is like kind of long here. I don't really like mine that long. So um, I'll cut it in half. So I'll just like cut half here. And then I will shred this way and shred this way. So if you like yours in thicker strips, this may be a good way. If you like yours sauerkraut a little bit thinner, then you probably want to take it through the food processor or some type of shredding um apparatus to shred so i'm just giving you some suggestions here for you to do that so that's what you're going to do right now and then we're going to get this all in a bowl It's all shredded. Let's get this in a bowl. 
Okay, this is the time we're gonna add our shredded cabbage to a bowl and we're gonna add our salt and get our hands a little dirty. We're gonna massage the salt into the cabbage to create our brine. So I'm adding this right now to this little glass bowl that I have. I use it for everything. I think if it breaks, I'm gonna be devastated. So pray that I never break it, as clumsy as I am. Isn't this beautiful? Nice and green. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. And um, this is gonna be fun. Let's get the sea salt. Okay, so we're gonna add the salt to the cabbage. And this is one head of cabbage. So I'm starting off with one heaping tablespoon of salt to start with the brine. So what you have to do is you do have to get your hands in there, people. And you're just gonna massage this for about five minutes and then a liquid is gonna form. You want enough liquid so it covers the shredded cabbage when it enters into the mason jars. So I'm just going to keep massaging, keep massaging. I try to start with a little bit of salt because I don't want my cabbage super salty. Um, I want it salty enough because obviously it's tasty and that's what's going to help with the brine and the fermentation. But I don't want it so salty where I feel like I'm drank, um an ocean. So this is going to take about five minutes and we'll come back and see where we're at here. And I kind of do this. I'm usually preparing dinner or lunch. And then, um, you know, I, if I, my arms are hurting or whatever, I mean, this is a great workout, um, <laughs> then I'll stop and then restart because this does take a bit of time. And as you can see, it's already um, decreasing in size. This was a heaping bowl. Now it's gone down about 25%. Okay, so now it's time to start filling our mason jars with our sauerkraut. Um, and the goal is to make sure that all of the kraut is completely covered. So you basically want to like overstuff this, leaving some room for your rack or weight um, in your covering. So I'm just going like, to see how the liquid's forming. You can see it gushing. You see that? That's the brine. That's what we want. So we're just going to, sorry about that. A timer off. Um, so now we're just gonna fill this to the top. We want about maybe maybe about this much um, space. Okay, so now is the time we're gonna fill our mason jars with our sauerkraut, and I may have enough for one jar, but if not, I have two smaller jars that I can fill as well, or I can make them in two smaller jars if I want to give them away or whatnot. So I'm just filling this mason jar and leaving about this much space so I can fill it with my weight and um, cover it so it can ferment. And you want this to ferment on your counter from five to seven days. The longer it ferments is a better taste to me personally. But after five days, give it a little taste. See if you like it. If you like it, then it's good as gold. If you don't like it, then you want it to ferment a little longer. Then at that time, you're gonna remove the weight, remove the top leaf um, or top cabbage leaf right here. You're gonna remove that and then remove the weights and cover it and then just store it in your refrigerator for up to six months. So yeah, I'm getting enough for one large jar. So let me finish this and we'll go to the next step in a minute. Okay, so I ended up packing them in two smaller mason jars because I'm going to give one away and these are the weights that I purchased. I will link those below and they're also on my blog. And what I'm gonna do, oh, I forgot to add this. Don't let me forget this, guys. This is my leaf. I just like to add this in there for a little extra crunch. Plus it also keeps everything completely submerged. So I'm just gonna add that in there. And here's my other little leaf that I'm gonna add. So I can hit, make sure everything's submerged. And you wanna make sure there's no like kraut along the line just because that's gonna just be grow the mold that we don't want. So we're gonna put that on there. And then these also have like little suction cups, which are kind of cool um, to go right on the top. And then they have the screw lid right here. That's why you want a little bit of space. And um, here we go. And then we're just gonna cover these. And then we're gonna place them on the counter. I'm gonna loosely do this. I'm not gonna do this really tight. And then we're gonna just put these on the counter for about five days, check to see if we like the taste of it. If we do, then they're perfect. We'll put a, a sealed lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. If we don't like it, we're gonna let it ferment a little bit longer. I usually like this a little bit longer. So we'll check back in a few days. 
Okay guys, so we reach day five with our fermentation of our sauerkraut and I went ahead and removed the extra cabbage leaf and I tasted it and I realized I wanted it a little bit more salty. So I added a pinch more salt and I noticed the brine wasn't completely covered. So I put a smidge of vinegar on top and replaced it with the weight and suction and rim or screw on lid. Um, and let it sit for a couple more days and then I like the taste. So I went ahead and removed everything, removed the cabbage leaf, make sure everything was submerged, clean the lid just to make sure there was no gunky things or anything on it. And then I simply just capped it with uh, another lid and put it in the refrigerator. And then I can store it in the refrigerator for up to six months. Now, I like to eat sauerkraut many different ways. Um, I like to use it as a side dish on top of salads. I serve it with meals such as lunch and dinner. Um, you can also serve it with like sausage. The only problem is, is if you serve it warm, you're gonna kill all of the good bacteria. So you wanna make sure that you're eating as much fermented foods at least three to five times a week for you to be able to benefit from all those healthy bacteria, healthy things that are in fermented foods for good probiotics, for good gut health. Um, I find that if you are pretty proactive um, with using fermented foods, um, your digestive system is just better in the end. Use, you know, if it's from sourdough to pickles to sauerkraut, you're just gonna have a better overall gut health and that's essential for overall health. With all of this being said, all of my fermented recipes are over on the blog. They're super simple, they're great for beginners. This cabbage or sauerkraut recipe is super easy. I have a pickle recipe over there, fermented pickles that we love. Um, and then there's a couple different everyday breads, sauerkraut, um, sauerkraut, sourdough breads. Um, there's the cinnamon roll recipe, that's really good. There's cookies, so there's sweet treats from everyday breads. So go ahead and check that out. Um, maybe this year you can get started with incorporating more fermented foods into your diet and doing it at home. I mean, you can buy a lot of these things in the store, but it's just a little bit more pricier and it's so easy, it just takes, um, some time throughout the, the week um, to prepare it and a little bit of maintenance and that's about it. And like I said, this is easy. You could store it in the fridge for up to six months. I made two jars with one head of lettuce. You could buy a couple and make a big batch if you eat a lot of it. Um, I'm pretty much the only one who eats it. My husband will eat it um, on sandwiches. So you can make a sandwich, um, sausage too, things like that are great. Um, and I will link all of the things I use from my weights to all of this if you want to. But like I said, you can simply just use a rack from outside. Just make sure you clean it. Um, and I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you can incorporate some more fermented foods into your diet. Um, make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you wanna see more videos like that. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos from me and I will talk to you guys real soon. So long. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba.